All right. What hey, what we're gonna do tonight is I'd love to share with you the story of Madpoles in the very first eight months. The very first eight months before any significant capital came in, before any significant um, team was around us. We have an amazing team, by the way, which is some of them here. That's amazing. But before that was the case, how did we scale this business? How did we bring it to a point that we could raise some investment from there? Um, hire an amazing team and from there really spent on paid online marketing cha um, channels. Why am I giving this talk? Because I've been in fish burners for a while. There are some fish burners people here, right? Yep. Yeah. There you go. And very often I've been asked there, people are just starting with amazing ideas, but then the question is, how do we get to a point that we can actually have some traction, right? So that's what this is about. Um, cool. I have a clicker. Oh, and that's the takeaway, guys. So. Hopefully, some of you will walk away and know exactly the steps to take to get to that very first level, that first level of raising, let's say, a million dollars, um, that first level that you can really start accelerating significantly, right? Cool. <coughs> and these are my nine learnings, by the way, my nine learnings. Learning number one, good is great, but perfect is too much. And I'll tell you a little story. Here's what happened. We got the idea of, you know, myself and the founding team got the, the idea of Madpulse and said, Okay, let's do this and let's do this fast. And just while we're starting and to engage the developers, Vietnamese developers in Vietnam, um, a big US company named uh, DogVK in the United States suddenly raised a well, similar, similar, similar business model, suddenly raised a massive round of funding, $25 million. And this was over TechCrunch, all over the news, and um, you know, suddenly all of, uh, all of Australia was flooded with mad paws similar companies there were 20 of them when, while we were ex um, building the website and so we told the developers guys do this fast launch this in three months we have no time to lose absolutely not at all and so one thing about uh, i don't know you guys some of you might be familiar with code that's spaghetti is spaghetti code that means non-scalable code right dimitri you know about this very well non <laughs> Not because um, he's, he codes it, but he, in the end, became our you know, head of technology and had to deal with some of that spaghetti code. In this case, it was Vietnamese noodle code, as we say. Um, <laughs> not because the guys are not skilled or anything, just because we asked them, do it fast, knock it out fast. And, but this is my learning. If we wouldn't have done that, there wouldn't not have been any mad polls today. That's the honest reality. We had to go very fast, launch in three months. And so we did. Um, then, okay, we have a website live. Actually, users are kind of finding it a little bit here and there. They can't sign up because of you know the spaghetti code, but it's happening. We're getting some traction and we're learning from our users. And we're ahead of the curve, ahead of the 20 um, competitors that are launching two months, three months later. Now, how are we nonetheless going to differentiate us from the competitors in the market? And I think when you don't have a lot of funding, you don't have a lot of money to spend on online marketing, let's use the term and the, me the methods behind growth hacking. Now, what is growth hacking? A really cool idea, a really cool um, example of growth hacking is Airbnb, that when they were small, they went on to Craigslist, right? The gum tree of US, where they found listings and they just messaged all those listings saying, hey guys, um, I think you have an amazing listing here on Craigslist. Why don't you list this on our website called Airbnb? It's getting tens of thousands of website traffic bullshit, getting tens of thousands of website traffic just listed here. And, um, and it worked. And Airbnb scaled and scaled and got all those listings from, from Craigslist and also the amount of people looking for you know, rooms to rent on Craigslist. And suddenly Airbnb became big and they didn't have the resources anymore to go into Craigslist. And also Craigslist shut them down, absolutely, of course, right? <laughs> and so, um, so they had an amazing problem to have. And what they did then is they implemented a technology API where someone who would list their listing on Airbnb, by now a big site, would automatically list on Craigslist. And so what was happening is what they were getting lots of free demand by all those Airbnb listings automatically posted on Craigslist. So how can we do something similar on low resources, right? Step A, from my point of view, step A. Absolutely family and friends, and friends of friends. If you can't sell 100 units of your products or of your <laughs> service, assuming it's not a boat service, right? It's very expensive. It's a normal service. If you can't sell that to your friends and family, um, either you have a shit product, I think, or you're just not trying hard enough. So absolutely hustle. What did we do with Maples? Well, 
we went to University of Sydney. I just graduated at univer from University of Sydney when we started Mad Plus. And um, I was the president of the student society. And so I knew the president of the vet society. And I said, hey, Matt, just starting this business. It's being developed in Vietnam now, but we want to pre-sign up some pet sitters. Can you send this out to your vet students' students? And there were 2,000 of those at the University of Sydney. And he was like, yeah, this is no problem. He sent it out. And those people, they have time. They want to earn some extra income. And they, you know, what's very important, they love animals. And so I have received hundreds of pre-registrations on my Weebly you know, landing page, very crappy website. Um, it wasn't a website, it was a landing page. And that was, honestly, there was now 100 pet sitters on our website even before we had any technology. Then, family and friends again, right? We launched at the University of Sydney Business School, was able to use their network, was able to use their amazing venue, and were able to in through them, invites um, a bunch of amazing CEOs that were just really excited for this venue. And we had as this event CEOs, pet sitters, and students, because there was all my friends, right? I just graduated. Um, and what we said was, OK, guys, here's our presentation. Now you go into little groups of uh, five groups of 10. And your mission now today is to come up with a slogan, because we've been fixing the website for, you know, for two months. We don't have a slogan yet. You come up with a slogan, and you have to submit it via Twitter. And here's a live Twitter wall. And here is the dean of the University of Sydney. And the dean of the University of Sydney is going to grade your slogans. And he's going to pick the winner. And the winner gets a bottle of wine. <laughs> OK? Awesome. And so but what was happening is all these influential CEOs were tweeting and tweeting and tweeting mad Paul slogans. And it was started trending on, on uh, Twitter. And we just had suddenly created this massive vibe um, around mad Paul's. And uh, many of those people that were at that event, not many, but a couple of those people that were at that event saw our pet sitters pre-registered on the websites saw that we were doing already traction when we didn't launch, saw the whole hype around it at the event, and they ended up being our very first investors to put in $100,000 to $200,000, which were then able to you know, hire one, two people to continue expanding the team. That's really family and friends. Exploit that hustle, ask everyone to book your service, use your connections. <laughs> Number two, existing demand on the internet. We love demand on the internet, right? Um, speak later to our head of marketing, Karim. He is the expert in Google, and Google works Amazingly, if you do it well, it works really well, right? People looking for search terms. However, Google is very expensive. Both the paid advertising as well as the unpaid advertising, very, very expensive. And so um, let's not use Google. Let's first see where is free demand on the internet. And now I'm going to tell you the story of David. David was a 19-year-old casual employee at Madpost, the very first one. He was helping me out. And one day when the website was, you know, the spaghetti code, the noodle code, wasn't working and no one could sign up. Well, we didn't have much traffic. There were maybe 10 people trying to sign up, but all 10 were calling me at the same time. So I was fixing the website and taking calls, doing everything at the same time. And I'm like, okay, David, I don't know what you're going to do now. However, David, you know what? We got all these pet sitters around the University of Sydney area now. How about you expand before those 20 competitors expand? How about you expand um, in in all other cities in Australia. Let's do it. We've got to be first. We've got to be the number one pet services solution, right? Oh, but Alexis, how do I do that? Oh, David, I've never done a startup before. I've definitely never done a pet sitting startup before. I have no idea. <laughs> ah, OK, Alexis, I'll figure it out. Yeah, David, you will figure it out. You're very smart. I'm very smart. I'm going to figure it out. OK, cool. David, awesome. So Alexis, which city should we expand in? David, can't you judge by my French accent? I'm Belgian, not French. <laughs> by my French accent that um, um, I'm, I'm not from here, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you, you choose, man, up to you, 100%, no problem. Okay, David says, leave it with me. We're going Melbourne, we're going Brisbane, and we're going Adelaide. Oh, David, why Adelaide? Ah, uh, you know, my ex-girlfriend's from Adelaide, she says there are many doggies there, it's gonna be all right. Okay, <laughs> no, no problem, David, I trust you. Okay, one week passes, and I see in Google Analytics, always use Google Analytics, it's for free, definitely, definitely use Google Analytics, I see a spike in website traffic. David, what are you doing? Wow, Alexis, here are you know, 10 signed up pet sitters in Adelaide, 20 signed up pet sitters in Melbourne, and so on. Wow, okay, I'm posting ads on Gumtree because you told me that story about Airbnb being Gum in uh, Craigslist. It's free to post ads on Gumtree. It's something Gumtree people want, you know, nothing wrong <laughs> with it. It's working. That's working. So David, how many ads have you posted? Oh, about four or five in each city. And that brings so much traffic, like hundreds of website visits for free, zero dollars. Uh, David, 
we are going to post Gumtree ads all day, every day. Let's go, my friend. <laughs> and we are posting Gumtree ads, boom, boom. And it's bringing traffic. It's bringing thousands of traffic. It's at some stage bringing 10,000 of free traffic on absolutely zero dollars, right? So now our website is on fire. It is working. We're getting user signups, thousands of user signups. We'll get to that in a stage, right? On absolutely zero dollars marketing spent on, on David. So ever since, this is no longer the story of David. This is the story of David, the growth ninja. He got some amazing growth ninja jobs after. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, very smart guy. I like him a lot. He's 21 now doing great things. Cool. Family and friends, online demand for free. PRable content. That's the other thing. PR is such an amazing thing. So obviously when Matt was launched, great. Right, all of the news because it's Airbnb for dogs, it works well. However, news needs to be news. It's not gonna work forever like that. So a couple cool things with it. We organized Australia's largest ever dog party where dogs were getting their nails painted and you know, people were, that, this was later stage, but it fits in this early stage thinking, right? And Karim, the head of marketing was running around with chocolate eggs for Australia's largest ever chocolate, uh, dog friendly chocolate Easter egg hunt. It was amazing. And there were 2000 doggies and 2000 pet owners that showed up all tweeting about mad balls. And there was so many articles being published, millions of eyeballs, and then Sunrise spent two hours at the event um, doing the weather forecast, two hours at the event, and the websites absolutely crashed, right? <laughs> By coincidence, at the time I was speaking, I don't think it's about it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, no, it was, it was fantastic. So this thing cost us $6,000 to organize everything, right? Everything, 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 and it crashed our website with everyone who came to visit, that's it. We did the same. We launched the Sharing Hub, Australia's accelerator for sharing economy businesses. And our mission is to help sharing startups, right? Sharing economy startups. However, when we launched, why not make this a massive PR opportunity? It costs us $2,000 to get some food and drinks, invite some influential people, invite some reporters, invite the Minister of Innovation, Minister Matt Keane. And look, did we have to have a red ribbon that he was going to cut? No, cut? No, definitely not. But it created the PRable content. And he cut the red ribbon, and it wasn't a Today Show. And the Mad Post app was featured here on the Today Show. And again, our website traffic was sky high through the roof, millions of eyeballs. Website didn't crash. We learned. Dimitri, head of technology, learned from the first time. We were up and running, taking all the, all the pets, pet owners to our website. It was fantastic. Um, this Sunday, last Sunday, we organized Australia's largest ever sharing economy, sharing hub expo, where we had some of you, I saw you there, we had 20, you know, sharing economy businesses, such as Madpost, Car Next Door, Airtasker, displaying, right? Um, and the general public could come find out, how can I make some extra income in, in, in your society? Now, is press going to love this? Absolutely. And so we were on television again, Sunrise, Madpost again, and through the roof, website traffic. This thing cost us $2,000. Um, to organize a bit more, but we divided it by many, many companies, so it was almost nothing, and we just got so much out of it. The PR agency said we got 19 million eyeballs. There are only 22 million Australians. I don't know how that worked. Maybe it's one eyeball too bad. Anyway, the point is, it was great. <laughs> So, guys, now that we will have lots of website traffic to our website, it is very, very crucial to measure everything. Early startup, measure everything. And measure what drives growth, okay? For example, Facebook um, famously recognized that signing up a user who would then, in, within 14 days, connect with their friends with, with 10 connections would correlate with high repeat usage, which high engagement. So one of the core metrics that Facebook measures and that optimizes on is how many users did you sign up today that within 14 days connected with four, 14 of their friends. You see what I mean? It's really finding which metrics drive growth. At Matpos, we're very, 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 very obsessed with numbers. We fill out an Excel sheet every week with 500 lines of numbers, but it's crucial and it just gets us mega focused on what drives this business and it just gets us on top of stuff. Um, now, now that we're measuring everything, I think it's crucial to <coughs> laser focus on one metric. For everything else, good is great, but perfect is too much. Now, that may sound ab abstract, so let me tell you another story. So, beginning of Mad Pulse. We're signing up all these, this, uh, David the Grove Ninja signing up all these pet sitters. We sign up Lisa Chimes of Bondi Vet, absolutely really nice person, and she's, our, she's obviously famous. She's our brand ambassador. I'm very, very excited. Um, we sign up David, again, signing up thousands of pet sitters on zero dollars everywhere across Australia. We are destined to be number one in my mind. I'm very, very excited, right? User growth in the first two months, 7,000 in two months, 7,000 on zero dollars, sign up users, amazing, right? I'm very, very excited. 
the press loving Mad Pause. We're doing all these PR stunts all over the press. My face all over the press. I was excited. I'm going to be very honest. I called my mom. I called my grandma. <laughs> they were very happy. My grandma said, oh, so the dog walking thing is working out. I'm like, yeah, I'm walking 10 dogs. It's fantastic, you know. <laughs> <We're all laughs> so it's good. Um, it all sounded amazing. I was very, very excited. However, when we started measuring and when we started focusing on what matters, this is what happened. This was our number of paid bookings in the first six months. The one metric that actually matters, paid bookings, revenue, right, was just flat for six months. Now, try raising capital or any significant capital um, when your growth curve is flat. It's probably easier to raise money when you don't have any growth curve and you don't have any sales. You know, well, that's going to be amazing. But when the stats are just flat for six months, no way, right? Um, and then this happened. My competitor in Australia, one, one of the 20, raised $1.5 million of a very, very respected um, venture capital fund. And people were sending me messages. Hey, Alexis. 50% of the messages were like, oh, Alex, you're going back to Belgium now? <laughs> and the other 50% of the messages, because the name is very similar, oh, Alexis, congratulations on the funding. Awesome. Let's go for drinks. Those ones were worse to respond to, you know? It's like... <laughs> um, so... We're an issue now. We've got to change this, right? I could go back to Belgium or I could change this. And so the point is, um, and that's where my story comes, you've got to absolutely give a wow experience to your users. In our case, our pet sitters and our pet owners. And I'll tell you the story. We saw that flat growth curve. Same one, just <coughs> shrink it. We saw that flat growth curve. And the reason why it was flat, and for those of you who are interested in marketplace, a shared economy, it's a common problem called the chicken and the egg Problem. Which one goes first, pet sitters or pet owners? Now, we sign up all those pet sitters first, not just in Sydney, all over Australia with our growth hacking techniques, David the Growth Ninja. And, um, but it took us time to get demand. It took us time to get pet owners that we're going to pay money to have their pets have. And so by the time those first pet owners came to those pet sitters, they had forgotten that they signed up to Madpools. They were not engaged anymore. The vet students were doing their exams. They were maybe, you know, the backpackers were maybe back in Paris, right? And so, um, yeah, this, that connection was happening. We're getting lots of website traffic, I told you, but it was just not the connection between Petro and Petsitter not happening at all. And so that's when we said, me and it was, I believe, um, Chris, our head of product at the moment, um, first employee in the company, we said, look, we just got to call everyone up call every single pet sitter and tell them, remind them why they sign up, call every single pet owner. So we did. Hey, pet owner, don't you worry. We're going to find the pet sitter for Charlie. No problem. I swear. Swear to God. I'm signing it on a pe paper right now. Okay. Pet sitter, yo, you are going to, look, you, I'm this Alexis from Madpoles. What's Madpoles? Oh, you know, <laughs> earn some extra money looking at puppies and doing what you love. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love puppies. I love puppies. Tell me what to do. Look, so you got to go into your inbox chats and so on, just really explain them the process. And that's very, very, very aggressive. It's not aggressive in like, but aggressive in terms of pushing and just calling everyone. I'll tell you what I did. We just picked up the phone for every single booking that came to the website. The website was basically just leave your phone number and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do the transaction for you. We were the website, you know? This is what happened. This is what happened when we picked up the phone. Doof. Our growth curve went sky high to the roof, 100%, right? And where is this now? This growth has never stopped. This is hyper, hyper growth since then, and it is very much because we have been super close to the customers, to the pet sitters. Of course, here, we no longer have the opportunity to call every pet owner, every pet sitter. It's no longer possible. But we did, similar to Airbnb. We had a great problem to have that we couldn't call everyone anymore. And so with an amazing team I had, you know, there, didn't have it here, but amazing team there, some of them over there, we just automated the whole calling experience with automated text messages, automated emails, automated everything. One of the coolest, I think, technology plays in, in MadPulse to date. And it just continues doing the trick, right? So be close to your customers. Absolutely wow your customers. Pick up the phone. That's my learning. Um, then, now, it's working. MadPulse is actually working. We went from here to there. Now, my next learning is very much email your database. You have all these um, you know, pet owners, in our case, in the database. Why not send them emails? Why not try to activate them if they haven't made a booking yet? Um, oh, Alexis, how many, send, how many emails do you guys send a week? Well, we send five, five every, every five days we send an email. Oh, that's a lot. Aren't people unsubscribing? Maybe. But two things. One, 
anyone who is unsubscribing, in my point of view, can just continue not buying. That's reality, right? Um, secondly, we're not sending them emails saying buy Madpost, buy Madpost, buy Madpost. Blah, blah, blah. We're sending them emails with engaging pet content, things we know they are interested in, things that they are going to want to read regardless of whether they're going to use the service so that when they want to use the service, right, they think of that article they just read in their email box. For example, may the pause be with you guys uh, tonight. <laughs> for example, if you want to know which star sign is per which per pet is perfect for your particular star sign, sign up to our database and you'll know. These sort of things that just are really, really engaging for those pet owners and those pet sitters, it's, I think it's amazing and I think the marketing team is doing a fantastic job. Um, yeah, so subscribe to our email, bo email uh, box. Guys. Now, so we're engaging, we're getting users, we're getting transactions, we're engaging them with our emails, they we're building a community, right? Um, this is still in the story, pre any sort of funding. Now, we are actually at a stage that this business is going places. We're not doing lots of volume, we're definitely not doing lots of revenue, marketplace is very low margin. But the growth is there, and it's like we can see where it's going. We can see where it's trending. So let's raise some money now, right? And I think in a lot of things that, that I'm personally proud of in my life, where, where the things where I had little accomplishments, it's always been because I met people that have helped me in those accomplishments. And so my honest view is people connections is everything. And that's why we started the Sharing Hub. The Sharing Hub, again, Australia's accelerator for sharing economy businesses. We are here together, um, we founded it together with four companies and members are Airtasker, you all know Airtasker, you know, um, Car Next Door, very, very popular here as well. All those sh sharing economy businesses that face a similar problem, such as the chicken and the egg problem, which I explained before. And this is amazing because we help solve each other's challenges. We buy media in bulk, so we all you know, save money. We s recommend investors. We even discuss the details so that we know. We go into the investment room informed. I think it's very, very crucial. Now, networking. I'll tell you a few stories. Car well, when I was in fish burners, we were always very hungry because we don't make much money. And so we always went down for free food right, every single time, free beers and free food. And one of, at one of those networking events, uh, events, Will, who is the founder of Car Next Door, uh, went down for a beer and a pizza and he met the deal guy at Caltex. Right? And just from that meeting over pizza and beer it, at some random networking event on a Thursday night, um, Car Next Door got $2.5 million in investment. Right? That's amazing. Now, of course, they had a great <coughs> business, but the point is, it's a very strategic partner as well. So how amazing is that? Is that? Tell you another story. I was at a networking event, just doing my thing, you know, hey, nice to meet you. And, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and this guy tells me about, oh, Alex, you seem like a cool guy. Look, you should um, come to this other networking event where we are going to present something amazing. We're going to send a boat to Antarctica and it's going to be packed with entrepreneurs and it's going to be packed with investors and we're just going to bring them together and build ideas on the boat. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah, definitely want to come to the networking event. So I went <laughs> and it si seems really cool. However, the boat tickets were, you know, several tens of thousands of dollars. And so I obviously couldn't afford it. But they were like, look, Alex, we'll take you on for free. I was like, look, I just started Mad Wolves. I don't have the capacity now. But I know a great friend of mine who can, who's very good with post-it notes. You know, and he can facilitate workshops. Ah, that's great. And so my good friend Shai, um, I happened to meet with him, and he, they, you know, got him for free on the boat to run innovation sessions because he's really good at that. And look at him on the boat in Antarctica, and that to me is just the absolute summum of networking. If you can just through meeting people, get your great friends, and in his case, get to sit, you know, go to the other side of the world and <laughs> have such amazing photos. <laughs> so. <laughs> and he met amazing people as well, guys, but just <laughs> FYI. Um, how to network. Look, maybe I'm just saying this and it doesn't matter for all of you because I've all seen you making amazing connections. However, I'm going to tell it anyway because there are some amazing people in, in the room. I know, you know, some of you and you've done um, incredible things. So get to know each other a little bit after. And I think this is my advice just from doing a little bit. Ask lots of questions. That's one, how you learn. And two, people love speaking about themselves. I'm loving this, you know, chatting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ask questions, like it works really well, right? Ask for advice. That's what I will always do, mostly because I really want to learn. How have you gotten to that position? What do you guys do in your marketing and so forth? Um, don't sell, that's always the worst. Don't come with an agenda. I think it's just about meeting people, not about I want to meet you because I want this out of you. 
and not expect immediate benefits. My most beneficial connections have been proven to be valuable six months, maybe one year down the track, right? So it's not like, oh, I need to now meet up with you for a coffee because I need something out of this. Things come, you know, after. Justin, we met each other eight months ago. Right now we're helping each other again. That's awesome. Cool. Um, so we met amazing people now. We went to these networking events. We met some people that might be inve in investors in the future. How do we really line up those investment <laughs> conversations? How do we, our business is going well now, right? How do we get um, investment? Well, I think I really like this quote. It's from uh, one of the most prominent venture capitalists in the world, and it's everything else is much harder than capital raising. It's not because capital raising is easy, it's because it's much harder to build a business that's worth investing in, right? And so focus on the business, focus on the business growth, focus on that one metric that matters, and for everything good is great, but perfect is too much, and then you'll have a business, hopefully. But I think if you have a good concept, you will have a business that's worth having those conversations. Hustle. I like this quote as well, ask for advice if you want investment, that's what I said before. Hey, you have so much experience, how can you help? Ask for investment if you want advice, that's true. Any investment meter, meeting you want, you go to, you get lots of uh, free advice, that's awesome. Um, one thing we do at Matplos is I send a, a shareholder update every two months <laughs> to all my shareholders, but I also send a share, not a shareholder update, but a, you know, update to everyone I ever met that suggests of interest to me. Whether they have money or not, doesn't matter. I just send an update, they get my numbers, they get the latest developments. And it's really good, and when we're raising money, um, just push it out and say, hey, by the way, do you know anyone or are you interested yourself? And we get lots of positive feedback from that because people feel they're part of the business already, right? And they want to contribute because you're updating them, you're including them in the journey. So mm -hmm. really build that long-term relationship and I think such updates, sending it out to a number of people is very, very valuable. Um, in Sydney, you've got some amazing meetups where people that are interested in investing in um, startups just get together. So I really recommend if you are at that stage that it's growing, that you have a, a growth story and, and can you know, sell the future, go to Innovation Bay, go to Sydney Angels, go to the many, many accelerators. Every big company in Australia, almost, Qantas, you know, NRMA, Telstra, they're all building accelerators to really kickstart growth of startups. Chat to these guys. All of these things in a list put together by Airtree Ventures, I think it's fantastic. There is this Google Drive, um, G uh, Google Sheet, and it contains all angel investors, all investment funds, all accelerators. Um, so you guys notice now down that link? <laughs> no. Well, uh, I think you can Google this, right? So that's awesome. Okay, then, now, we found some people. We asked them for advice. We're building a long-term relationship. Now we're ready to raise money. How are we now going to pitch to them? Well, it's very easy. It works in five steps, okay? Very, very easy. This is my um, graph of repeat bookings, actual graph, right? Um, step one, vertical expand. Step two, <laughs> horizontally so that you have a square. It makes it look steeper, you see? <laughs> steeper. <laughs> step, step three. Remove the title, it saves you one like, good um, two centimeters, remove the title, put the title back so it looks legit. <laughs> step three. Step four is whatever this number is, you make that plus 5% on this line, you save one more centimeter. Super steep now, okay, you ready? Last step, guys, we're gonna take away the grind lines and the border, and it looks natural, beautiful. <laughs> Wanna invest, oh. Wanna invest? Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Because this is recorded and I'm actually raising capital, this slide is very important, guys. Guys, this was a joke, okay? <laughs> Reality is, it's hard and it's all very much about the numbers. Your business needs to work. It needs everything else is much harder than capital raising, right? Um, however, I would still do what I said, just because so you feel amazing when you go in the meeting, so you feel great, so the business is sky high, and so you have all the energy in the world to like, you know, sell the vision as you should. Um, Investment pitch, focus on the metrics, that's the point. Numbers is everything. Elevated pitch, right? When someone chats to you at such a networking event and they generally want to hear about you, what you're doing, you don't want to give like a 15 minute spiel. What you want to do is a 40 second thing. What are you doing? What's the market size? What's the traction so far? What's the deal hit, right? Um, Mad Post were Airbnb for pets. There are 8.5 million dogs and cats in Australia, which is double the number than there are teenagers in this 
in this country, we're quadrupling the business each single year consistently. We know how to do this continuously. By 2020, I sign you this year right now, will be $100 million business. That's in you know, two, three years. And guys, by the way, this round is half subscribed. You better commit by next week, Monday, because like, we need to move forward. I'd love to work with you. Right? <laughs> Visualize the future like it is reality. Doesn't mean that you need to uh, you know, dream beyond and, and above, but you need to dream big and believe it and show it to those people like it's reality. Because investors want to see return, that's their business model, right? If they invest a particular valuation, they want to see times 20, times 10, maybe times 15. You need to visualize how you're going to get them. This is one thing I learned the hard way. Q&A is much more important than the pitch. If I get 20 minutes to pitch now, I used to, in the past, my very first one, do 15 minutes of pitch and then have five minutes of Q&A. Very bad, because what happens, and that's why the onion is here, you might have been wondering, um, investments, investors will look at um, an investment as an onion, and you kind of want to peel the layers of risk off. Okay, is there market risk? No, because the business is working. Is there team risk? No, because the team has proven capabilities. Is there technology risk? No, and so on. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that all the risks that they have in their minds, they have the opportunity to ask those questions, and you have the opportunity to um, <coughs> say what's up, say what, why that is a risk or why it isn't a risk. Um, so now I would honestly do a seven minute pitch and the 13 remaining minutes I would spend on Q&A. Absolutely. Um, and that's kind of summarizing what I just mentioned. Never leave an investor meeting without understanding their doubts and criticisms. That's, I think, the most important. Cool. So, raising money. That's that. That's my takeaways from, from that. Um, that's the, by the way, the getting the first seed money, the first one million. Of course, if you go into bigger rounds, there are much more things to take in account, kind of different ways to approach funds and so forth. But when we're growing a business, that's how I would do it. Now, and this is my last learning, guys. And then we have 10 more minutes for great questions. Right? My last learning is, I think, honestly, it's all about hard work and passion. And I'll explain this again with another learning. I was in Fishburners, right? Australia's co-working space for early stage companies. Amazing space. And um, I, um, look, I was working lots of hours, um, day and night. I was also living next to around the corner, which wasn't helpful. And I also didn't have any friends because all my friends from university, I was came here to study, they all left back to Europe, so I was by myself. And so I spent lots of lots of time at night, and this is kind of my um, night crew, the guys who we hang out with, who we re worked really, really hard with uh, late night in Fishman's. This is Dane. And Dane, I asked Dane, so what are you doing? Uh, Alexis, I'm building the world's best skateboarding app. And I've been doing this for two years. And then I heard from other people, like, he hasn't left the building for two years. You know, figure of speech, but he hasn't left the building. He wasn't necessarily eating super healthy. He was just super focused, working passionately on what was his absolute passion in life, which was skateboarding, to make, as a mission, the world's best skateboarding app. Okay, cool. Um, usually when people are going to make the world's best whatever and do this for two years nonstop before launching it, it's not how I would recommend doing things. As I said to you guys, good is great, perfect is so much, launch and learn. What he was doing now, okay, let's see. He launches on the 1st of January, right? 2015. 1st of January, 2015. On the 7th of January, 2015, it was the most downloaded skateboard app in the world. Today, it is still the most downloaded skateboard app in the world. Dave had gone to all the, Dane, sorry, Dane had gone to all the skateboarding apps all over the United States, had replicated them in his app to into little, little details, had spoken to all the online communities. He didn't go out to Fishburners, but he was very good online. Spoken to all the online communities, understood what all the skateboarders wanted, and he just built the most, um, best skateboarding app in the world. Selling for $5 a piece, still most downloaded ever. It's incredible. Great, great on you, Dane, because he was hard, working hard and passionate. My friend Michael, right? Um, he was a police officer in France. He came to Australia. I was a backpacker here and said, you know what? I want to become a tech entrepreneur. And he was working like crazy, even working harder hours than all of us, sleeping at fish burners. I had to tell him where there were no cameras so he could crash because he has no money either. And um, he was just working really hard. And every two weeks, he was switching idea, which is not my recommended strategy, but he wasn't just, you know, not doing well. He was really executing it to a point that he was able to test it from users. And if the user didn't take up his product, didn't didn't like it, he would switch to a new idea. Like, imagine the you know discipline you need to have to that. 
And so Michael, the former police officer in France, said at some stage, you know what, I'm going to learn how to code and I'm going to make my own website because um, that's what I want to do. I'm like, yeah, Michael, but you know, you're 26. So I mean, like, you're good at marketing, shouldn't you do that? No, no, I'm going to learn how to code. Then he got thrown out of Australia because of visa, visa issues, not because he was a bad guy, visa issues. <laughs> and um, this was before the you know, regulations. But anyway, and, um, and I connected with him, and this is one and a half year later, and now he's a star coder. He was working as a CTO in a really like, great growing startup. And now, just two weeks ago, he just quit his job because at the site, he had a side project which he was working really, really hard on. Super disciplined guy, I told you. And where he's now almost basically doing you know, two thirds of the revenue of Mad Pulse in a one man show company. It's very, very impressive. Quit his job, the guy can work forever in the world, wherever now, it's, it's amazing. Um, and then lastly, and this is what I'm going to end the little the presentation with. This is Drew. He was the cleaner at Fishburners, and he was re working very hard. He was a student at UTS, but he was also the cleaner at Fishburners because he really loved startups. He wanted to learn from them. He wanted to meet the founders, and that cleaning job as a side job would just allow him to meet them. And it was great for me and the two others because, you know, as I said, we had no friends and we were just working a lot. And so it was a great psychologist to talk to late at night, you know what I mean? And um, especially when numbers were going for six months like that, hey, Drew, you know, let's clean together. <laughs> okay, fantastic, <laughs> fun. Okay. And, um, and uh, look, what I appreciate about this guy is just he was doing this for the love of startups. And I'm doing this very much so. And I would recommend to you for whoever jumps in this or is doing this, like, do it for the love of startups. It's amazing. I'm meeting the most amazing people within my team, learning amazing things from them. Um, just whenever I'm going to networking events, meeting super inspirational souls. I am every six months we're doing something entirely different. The learning curve is a sky high steep. It's fantastic. And um, yeah, I just generally, honestly, absolutely love it. Like Drew loved the cleaning because he loves startups. So guys, this was my talk. However, I'm not gonna leave without asking you one little thing. This is the hashtag that we have put together in the team because we want to make sure that we absolutely grow June double the size of uh, May, right? We can because it's a seasonal business and it works really well with holidays, lead up to school holidays. And so we've put forward this hashtag. It stands for JJ, ginormous June <laughs> with a J, hashtag JJ. And so who here had heard of Mad Pulse before joining this talk at all? Some people, okay, actually not bad. This must be because of the startup community, awesome. Now, you all know people with a pet, you all know people with dog, cat, rabbit, whatever. Just speak to them about Maples. Tell them that ginormous J, these guys need to double their revenue. Please talk to them about it. And, you know, if you wouldn't mind sharing, sharing um, Maples, I would absolutely fantastically appreciate it. Guys, before we just wrap up, we brought some of the Maples amazing team members, the guys who do everything here, the marketing head of operations, head of product, head of technology, up, you know, um, UX researcher. Um, chat to them. They know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, we just want to share the knowledge tonight. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>